Hey there, it's Susie here. Just before we dive into today's episode, I want to let you know about something that I've been working on for you. Right now, we're gearing up for our coaching week in March. At Coaching Week, I coach you through my go-to blueprint for landing your next client, all without having to cold call, and even if you don't have an email list, or you find it hard to explain what you do, or you find yourself backing away from asking for the sale. Now, by the end of Coaching Week, you're going to know how to find the right people and speak confidently about your business without feeling like you're being salesy. And while the week is valued at $350 and we've added over $1,250 in bonuses, I'm making Coaching Week available to you for just $10. That's a 97% saving. You can learn more and save your place at hercoachingweek.com. I'll see you there. Susie here. Thanks for joining me for episode 169 of the Her Business Podcast. I am very excited about today's episode because this is a topic that I personally find very interesting and I think you will too. And that's the topic of speaking up. This is where I see so many women get stuck. And when I work with women to help them grow their businesses or build stronger connection networks, this is an important key move that they need to master. And until we can get some mastery over our ability to speak up, we can really fail to meet our true potential in sales, in audience sizes, in success, in fame, all those good things. Now, here's how you know that you might have some work to do in the area of speaking up. Let's see if you can relate. I can check off a number of these (laughs) myself. So can you relate to this? You're not putting yourself forward for opportunities as much as you'd like to. Or you want to connect with your customers more and in different ways, but you don't want to feel vulnerable or be criticized. Or you're just not sure how to communicate the value that you bring or to differentiate yourself from the competition. Maybe you feel like you could be making more of an impact, but you're holding back either in sharing your message or you find yourself backing away from asking for the sale. That's a really common one. Maybe you have a brand new type of product or service and you've never positioned that offer in the market before, so you're not sure how to show up and speak up about it and to whom and when. Or you've changed your focus, and a lot of us have done that over the last 12 months, and while you knew how to talk about yourself in your old business or the way you used to do business, you're now not sure who you want to be now that you're creating a new direction for your business. Or maybe you lack some confidence and belief in yourself or your product or your service and who you're being doesn't match up with what you're doing and the results you're getting. If you can relate to any of those things, then keep listening. (laughs) Because here's the thing, to reach more people, to make more of an impact, to make a dent in the world, a little dent or a big dent, you need to be willing to not only be seen but also to be heard. And that can be tough. Being seen takes showing up, and we talked all about showing up in the last episode, episode 168, which if you haven't listened to, I encourage you to go back and listen to. And showing up and speaking up can make us feel vulnerable or feel like we're not enough or what if someone doesn't like us or what if we get criticised. And this reluctance is something that impacts a lot of people, but particularly women, even hugely successful women, and it can often stop us from speaking up. And for over 20 years, we inducted women into the Business Women's Hall of Fame. And time and again, I saw one particular thing stop us from speaking up. And that is the imposter syndrome. And that's the syndrome where you doubt the value of your accomplishments and you second guess yourself. So that's something to notice. And we'll talk more about imposter syndrome in another episode of the show. But for now, Another thing that can happen when we decide to speak up in a bigger way than before, say you're now moving into doing Facebook Lives or you have a YouTube channel or you're speaking on stages or you're doing a podcast or you're running an online challenge and you're looking to go from where you are now to play a much bigger game, what can show up is something else. It's not the imposter syndrome. It's something that author Stephen Pressfield calls the resistance. And that's that feeling that shows up anytime we want to go from one level to a higher level. And it's that voice that says, stay safe. To stay safe, you need to stay small. You don't want to take big risks. You might get hurt if you reach too high. If you step out and speak up too much, you don't know what might happen. Asking for higher prices, asking for a sale, leaning into opportunities, 
All that requires us to really get past this resistance and to speak up. And I really recommend Stephen Pressfield's books for that. Um, And if you email me, I can tell you which ones. What can happen is that we feel a hesitation to put forward our brilliant ideas in case someone doesn't approve. We don't speak up and share what we know. Or we feel guilty about bragging. We don't want to be a bragger. Or we're not speaking up in case someone thinks we have a hidden agenda. It's a total minefield, this speaking up. And I could write a whole book about this topic. And maybe one day I will. But for today, I want to share with you a powerful place to start speaking up more effectively. And that is in how you speak about your business when you're introducing yourself or your business for the very first time. Because when you can speak confidently about your business and there's no rambling and you're not fumbling over your words, you can instantly attract your perfect client or customer every single time. You have a much higher probability of actually attracting clients when you can do this well. And you feel more confident and in control when you have an opportunity to speak up and talk about your business when you have this one thing figured out. Now, inside the Her Business Network, we have a four-part system, which we call a connection statement. And we spend a lot of time with members getting this dialed in so that they have this ready to use when they meet someone at an event, on their sales pages, in emails, on their website, in interviews or presentations or proposals. It's really, really transportable and it's gold. When you have this, you'll feel this boost of confidence, even in difficult situations. And you'll find it so much easier to communicate your value, even if you're shy and introverted. And you'll feel more comfortable taking actions that get results, even if you don't feel 100% confident. Like I said, speaking up is where I see most women get stuck. And so I want to dig a little deeper today into this connection statement and give you some specific strategies for putting forward your brilliant ideas, getting known and connecting with more of your idle clients. And this is such an important part of making connections because this is where opportunities can really start to flow your way. When you have this, you finally know how to communicate your value without feeling slimy or like you're being pushy or salesy. And you build rapport, you position yourself in your business and you start sharing your story. Creating your connection statement, it is one of the most important moves that you could make right now to create more connections. And that's why I'm including creating your connection statement as a bonus in our upcoming Get New Clients Coaching Week. And I'm giving it to you so that you can have this to use again and again. Now, I'll tell you more about the Get New Clients Coaching Week later. It's coming up on the 8th of March. And here's why it's important, because have you ever asked someone what they do? You're at an event or you meet someone online and five minutes later, they're still talking, but they haven't really engaged your interest. They haven't really made a strong connection with you. So now your eyes are glazed over and you're looking at how to make a quick exit from this conversation. Because when you don't have a way to communicate what you do in terms of how you help others, you lose connection before you've even established it. And we can do this when we don't have a succinct way to tell people what it is that we do in a way that they understand, in a way that has them recognize if they're our ideal customer or they know our ideal customer. And you really want to be able to communicate your value in a way that instantly creates connection. And while this process, and I'm going to give you the process now, might seem fairly straightforward, naturally embedded in the process are four key elements that are going to form an important foundation for you. And I'll give it to you now. And as I said, I go deeply into this process and help verify your statement inside the Her Business Network. So if you're a member, you know this is available to you. If you're listening, you're not yet a member, um, I encourage you to get inside the Get New Clients Coaching Week so that you can learn this. But I'll give you the overview. Now, the first part of your connection statement and the place we always start when we're talking about getting new clients, is knowing who your ideal client is. So anytime you're talking about your business, you want to identify very clearly who you're for and who you are not for. So that's number one. Number two is what is the pain point or problem that your client is experiencing that you can help with? And whether you sell ballet shoes or you install solar systems or you're a stylist or you're a corporate trainer, there's a pain point or problem that your client is experiencing that you are a fix for. So you want to also know what that is and be able to articulate that when you introduce yourself. Part three of your connection statement is what exactly is it that you sell that is matched to your ideal client? And you hear me say that is matched to your ideal client because what is really important is that who our ideal client is and what we offer, that there is synergy there. And so the first three parts of your connection statement are 
Who is your ideal client? What is the pain point or problem you solve? And what exactly is your offer? And the fourth part is what is the unique way in how you deliver your product or service? So are you online, offline, brick and mortar, e-commerce store, subscription based, on retainer, you go into corporations? How is it that you deliver your results? Now that has changed for a lot of businesses over the last 12 months. But here's the thing, each one of these four parts of the statement allow you to differentiate yourself and to find your niche so that you never have to compare on price, compete on price rather. So let me give you an example. If you're a graphic designer, it doesn't matter that there are thousands of other graphic designers in your town, in your city, in your country, because it's the combination of who you serve, your ideal client, the pain point or problem that you specifically solve. So for example, you might specialize in writing copy for testimonials and case studies, or you might specialize in website copy, or your niche might be great calls for action. So that is the pain or problem. Or you might differentiate because what you sell, how you package and price and name and present your offers is what's really different for you. Or it could be how you deliver. It could be you're in a particular location, or it could be that you only offer things on a monthly subscription, or that you only do high-end, high-ticket clients or coaching programs. So that's the how part of the statement. That is the unique way that you deliver your product or service that really makes it easy to stand out and make connections and get more clients. So the connection statement I know might be hard to visualize listening about it here on a podcast. So I want to give you an example. So Amy Lee of Heart Content is one of our longtime wonderful members of the Her Business Network. Now, she is really clear that her ideal client is a small business owner who is confused about their positioning and their messaging. So inside the Her Business Network, she started speaking up and she got really good at explaining what she did using her connection statement. Here's what she said. She said, my name is Amy Lee. My business is Heart Content and I help small and medium-sized businesses connect with their ideal customer through brand story consulting, content strategy, and copywriting. Now, that's just one sentence. When I ask a lot of women what they do, it takes a lot more than one sentence for them to tell me who they serve, the problem they solve, what they offer, and how they deliver it. Well, with Amy, we know that her who is a small and medium-sized business. We know the problem is connecting with their ideal customer. We know that that's the problem the company is having. And we know that she does this through her brand story consulting, content strategy and copywriting. So in that instance, what she sells and how she delivers is all kind of in the one statement. But it's very succinct. So here's what happened for Amy. People got to know her. They really resonated that they needed her service. She would come to the monthly roundtables, our monthly networking and brainstorming events where women get to introduce each other and she would introduce herself um, and communicate what she did. She would get in the Facebook group and answer questions about positioning and messaging and brand story and share her expertise, commenting and encouraging others and people got to know, like and trust her. And her ability to speak up and communicate her value has turned into tens of thousands of dollars in contracts for Amy, making her business so much more viable which is really important as she raises her young family. She also spoke up and said, yep, I'll do it, when there was an opportunity to be a guest speaker on a member's masterclass. And on that masterclass, she presented a special offer. And so many people raised their hand and said yes to doing more business with her. And when I asked Amy about speaking up, she said that it was really important for her to speak up authentically. And that even though it wasn't easy for her, she did it anyway. When you can craft your connection statement, you can speak up authentically, demonstrating your value and how you help people. And that's why I'm so excited for Coaching Week and being able to help more women clearly share what they do so that they can instantly attract the perfect client or customer without sounding cheesy or feeling slimy. So if you'd like to join me at Coaching Week, here's what you want to do. You want to head on over to herbusiness.com forward slash coaching week. We get started on the 8th of March and the event runs for just one week and then it closes down. And by the end of coaching week, you'll know how to find the right people and speak confidently about your business without feeling like you're being salesy. Head on over to herbusiness.com forward slash coaching week. Now, if you have any questions, I would love to hear from you. I read and answer every single email and you can catch me at podcast at herbusiness.com. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, go ahead and hit subscribe to automatically receive next week's episode. And one more thing, 
would you leave us a rating or review on Apple Podcasts? I read every single one. I appreciate every single one. If you got a little bit of value from this session here today, this podcast here today, I would love it if you would do that. I'll see you next time on the Her Business Podcast. Thank you so much for listening.